So this video is considering Sheetran HDF output. So when a Sheetran simulation is run, an H.h5 file is produced. And this can be opened in an HDF viewer. In this example I'm using HDF view, but there are others available. So the first thing is to produce the or run the Sheetran simulation. I'm going to look at the slapped catchment here. So if I go to standard version program, double click on the executable and go to the example Slapton, double click on the run data slap file and the Slapton simulation will start. This runs for 720 hours which is about a month. I'm just going to pause it now and when it's finished uh, we'll come back and show the output. So the simulation is now finished and this is the slapped in a folder and this is the key file output slap shegraph.h5 so if I double click on this it will open an HDF view because I've already downloaded HDF view this is what comes up the catchment map is great it's a good way of showing the catchment on the river channels you double click on that and I right click on SV4 elevations, open as, go to image, top one here, catchment map palette one, click on OK, and if I maximize everything, you can see the catchment. I'll zoom out a bit, there you go. So you can see all the grid squares, and the blue here is where the river channels flow around the edge of the grid squares. And this is the outlet here. The couple of important things to note here is that if you click on image show values, you can see the values here. So this one here has got a value of 236. These aren't the real elevations, the elevations have been scaled between 0 and 256. Um, if you want to see the real elevations, you need to go to constant. And then here we go, surface elevation. The other thing to note, if you look at the X and the Y, each Shichan grid here is covers 20 points in this HDF view. Here and here. So that means that the rivers can also be seen here because they cover four points. So it's a good way of showing the rivers and the grid squares and the gaps between the two of them. So that's SV4 elevation. Another interesting or useful thing to show is SV4 numbering. So if I right click on that, open as. It's a different range of planets here, it doesn't have that extra one, but if I go to say rainbow, okay. zoom out, and again we've got similar view, but this instead of showing the elevations, shows the Sheetran element number, which can be very useful. So, for example, the in the OCD file, they're all all the data is all by the Sheetran element number. So, I click on image show value, and it shows the element number. I zoom in. So, there we go. If I click here, you can or hover here, you can see the value at this point is 353. So, that's element number 353. We are here. Element 81, that's a bank which I set up for Slapton. Not most catchments don't have banks. The river channel is number 27, the other bank is 54, and then the next one is 354. Now, if you want to actually look at what data is coming out of Sheetran simulation, you go to variables, and here's a choice of variables you can see. We're going to look at phreatic depth, which is water table depth. Double click on that. And right click on value, open as, and they've got a choice again, a spreadsheet or image. If I go to image and set the rainbow again, and here you've got a choice of what it's going to show. So dim zero are rows. So they go from zero to 33. Dim one are the columns. 
to go from 0 to 21 and bin 2 is the time and it's uh, 720 hours of simulation and there's data every hour so you can choose anything from 0 to 721 so normally best for this is to set the value here the initial value it will show the end of the simulation so I've set this to 720 then the range it will show will be correct uh, if you set it to zero often at start of simulation all the values are zero and then the range of values it shows is all, shows are all wrong so you set it to the end value this is use this is good click on OK and then we need to zoom in so this has got a one to one correspondent between the Shitran grid and the HGF grid so therefore you need to zoom in it doesn't have that 20 to 1 correspondence as before and we'll click on image show value and we can see what the values here the blue ones this is uh, these are hollows in the Saxon catchment and that's where the water accumulates and is near the surface so the value here this value here is minus 0 0.006 that means the water if it's minus the water is actually above ground and then if you look at some of the dry areas this red one here 9.29 meters so the water table is 9.29 meters below ground so that's a good way of looking at the spatial distribution of water tables if you want a time series at a point that same data is in graphic depth but you just have to view it in a different way so if you go to value open as again if you go to spreadsheet and change the orders of some of these so if you keep dim zero the same and swap dim two and dim one so what we're going to get here is select dim one which is the columns select this to be say column 10 and then click on ok you'll see this time series for all these rows down here so we've got 33 rows and then if we go along here you scroll along we've got 722 values because those are time series every hour of 720 hours so if we choose one particular column so this is column 6 we've already chosen row 10 so if I click on here the line plot click on row click on OK you can see the time series for that particular point so on the x-axis you've got the values every hour for 720 hours and on the y-axis you've got the depth below ground of the water table in meters so you can see here as time goes on to start with the water table is dropping and then it rains a lot and the water table comes up towards the surface so it increases from or goes from 1.65 meters up to 1.25 meters as it rains the water table is rising and as with all of this you can just you could just copy in this to any other thing so you can copy here and then paste it to any other software that you want to share it on so that's the end of this video i hope we've explained how hdf files work in shutran there's loads more options but this is just the basics